This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. It is Thursday, kind of, at least in spirit, which means it is our smorgasbord day here on Covering the Spread. I'm recording this on Wednesday night, so we're talking about some MLB opening money lines for Thursday and talking about some NASCAR, a little indulgence there. If you don't want the NASCAR part, don't worry. It'll be at the end of the show. If you want just the NASCAR part, you listen to this after the Thursday games have started. Check out the timestamp over on numberfire.com that will tell you where the NASCAR discussion begins, breaking down both Cup Series and Xfinity Series at Watkins Glen for this week. So let's dive on in and get you set for the rest of this week. This is covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network. My name is Jim Sadis. I am a senior writer and analyst for numberfire.com here to break down Thursday MLB money lines and NASCAR for this week at Watkins Glen. Quick scheduling note for today. As mentioned, I'm recording this on Wednesday night. So I'll put up on the podcast feed then as well. Video will be delayed. So if you're watching on the FanDuel YouTube page, apologies that it is delayed there. But working with constraints, I wish I could do this uh, in the evening every night to get you the opening MLB lines where they are as opposed to where they're at in the morning. But schedule constraints and such and such. I just have a bachelor party I'm leaving for on Thursday morning. So no time to record there. Tom Vecchio will be with you on Friday Filling in for me, he's going to break down some uh, MLB stuff, MLB props for Friday slate, and then talk about some NFL stuff as well. You can find Tom on Twitter at DFS underscore Tom, but the easier way to get the show should follow Tom, but also easier way to get that show is by subscribing to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcast. If you want some college football talk, we talked to Dr. Ed Feng on Wednesday to get his thoughts on some win totals across the Big Ten and the SEC. Find that here in the same feed as well. I'll be back with you once again on Monday. Also a short week for me next week. I'll be in Ireland for the Northwestern Nebraska game. So short week this week and next week, but still having Tom Vecchio in to fill in those days for me. We'll break down the Thursday MLB money lines in just one second. But first, NFL kickoff is still a few weeks away, but you can get in on the action now on FanDuel Sportsbook with their NFL Super Win Bonus. Right now, anyone who places at least a $50 Super Bowl winner bet will get $5 back for each win their team has during the regular season. There are also a ton of other futures markets available like team win totals, division winners, player props, and so much more. There's no better place to get ready for the football season than on FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook an official sports betting partner of the NFL. Must be 21 plus and present in select states only. Bonus issued is non-withdrawable free bets that expire seven days after receipt. Max free bet $50. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit fanduel.com slash RG. In Arizona, 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 53342. In Connecticut, 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat. In Indiana, 1-800-9-WITH-IT. In Louisiana, 1-877-770-STOP. In New York, 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY. In Tennessee, call the red line at 1-800-889-9789. In Wyoming, 1-800-522-4700, or in West Virginia, 1-800-GAMBLER.net. Let's dig into this Thursday slate here for Major League Baseball, and looking at the games currently posted, only one spot showing value for some me, for me in the money line, and that is going to be the Rangers. Their money line is currently minus 184 over at FanDuel Sportsbook. I've got them at uh, 69% to win this game. Their implied odds, 65%. So, I'm going to mention what my numbers say in case numbers do move. I have them at 69%. And I do want to mention, like, there is a possibility numbers move against me because I'm posting this pretty early and stuff will be more likely to move the wrong direction here. Let's say you pull open FanDuel, or you just check out this podcast Thursday, and you see that suddenly the Rangers are minus 166 as opposed to minus 184. That could mean that I've got a bigger edge compared to my numbers, but it also means I'm going against what smart people are betting on. So I would say proceed with caution in those situations. If the number gets worse, I would, you know, listen to the the analysis I give, listen to the rationale behind it. If you agree and you think that the way the number has moved is incorrect, feel free to dive in. I, I've got my numbers here for a reason, but 
just proceed with caution. If the numbers do move against me between when I post this and when you're listening and trying to bet this one. So again, 69% is what my numbers say about the Rangers here versus the A's. I am good laying uh, the minus 184 here personally, but I do think you could go towards the run line, which is plus 106 at minus 105. The reason I am okay with this one is that I like both aspects of this matchup. Dane Dunning's velocity is back up for the Rangers. He has not been lights out despite the velo re-increase, but he has been good enough to top an offense of this caliber. Rangers are facing Zach Logue, who is a lefty, and the Rangers pretty good against lefties, which to me is a surprise, at least. I didn't peg them as being a team that would be good versus lefties, but 119 WRC plus for them against lefties, a 199 ISO on their current active roster. Logue is a guy who struggled both in the minors and the majors, so I think this Rangers offense should be able to get him. And I think Dane Dunning should be good enough to hold the athletics offense in check. So as we've discussed here on the show, typically I'm more of a money line guy. I have a model for that. I do not have a model for run lines. I get very uncomfortable betting into markets where I don't have my own numbers. But here I am okay uh, going at uh, plus 106 at minus one and a half on the Rangers run line. I also am okay with the money line at minus 184 down to minus 200 or so, I think is uh, is enough wiggle room between what my numbers have and what the market would say to feel good about the Rangers in this spot. So pick your poison if you want to go the run line versus money line, but overall the Rangers, a team a bit undervalued based on my numbers for today. As far as strikeout props go, the first guy I'm going to turn to tomorrow is Adam Wainwright. Not a big strikeout guy, but he's facing the Rockies. I'm looking here because Wainwright is going super, super deep into games, specifically with just massive pitch counts. I got him projected for 105 tonight, which I don't typically do. I think that's actually the most I've had a guy projected at this entire year. It's a big number, but Wainwright just going deep in games. The Rockies strikeout rate versus righties has started to creep up. So I have Wainwright projected at 5.4 strikeouts for tonight. If they hang four and a half as being the number for today and I can get minus 150 or better on the over, I'm probably going to take it. I wouldn't be shocked if they put us at five and a half here, given that I have them at 5.4. It's the Rockies. People tend to like Wainwright. He's at home. I wouldn't be surprised at all if that number is at five and a half, but I do want to check on Wainwright to see if we get a four and a half for him there. Just going to read through a couple other strikeout projections I have here, just in case uh, these wind up being useful for you. I didn't grayed out every game just because I'm not really sure uh, a lot of starters have not been announced yet. So didn't want to go the game that may change. You Darvish 8.02 for me. I have Corbin Burns at 7.11. Uh, Dane Dunning is at 5.16. Luis Garcia 6.17. Lucas Giolito 5.57. Those can be kind of your guides there. I will say I got Darvish 8.02. There's a good chance he opens at six, at six and a half as his strikeout prop for tonight That does not mean automatic over because there are a lot of paths to unders. Let's say Darvish is at six and a half, uh, 8.02 strikeout projection. I have his over odds at six and a half at at 61.5%. So kind of use your best judgment on that. Obviously, even if I have a strikeout projection above the number, that does not mean they're meeting expectations to go over. It just means they probably got some upside. So be cautious there. Again, uh, Darvish 8.02 and... uh, other one that was relatively high for today is um, Corbin Burns, 7.11. So check out those, see if you can find some uh, some interesting numbers. But again, Wainwright, the first guy I'll look towards uh, because I do have him at 5.4 for today. That's all we got on the baseball side of things. Let's go to NASCAR and break down Watkins Glen. We got both the Cup Series and the Xfinity Series at Watkins Glen for this week. And on the Cup side of things, I'm not showing a ton of value as of right now. The one right outright that is up that I do like is Michael McDowell. Uh, he's 30 to 1 to win at FanDuel, but shop around because you can get him longer. He's 40 to 1 at uh, <coughs> Redacted, different sports book, but also 35 to 1. I got him here at Rhode Island Sportsbook, which uses Caesars lines. You can get him at the longer numbers. So shop around, get the best line. Even if you have just 30 to 1 on McDowell, my numbers are still showing value there, which probably means I'm too high. If I'm uh, higher than the lowest number, I'm probably too high, but my numbers like McDowell because he has been a beast on road courses this year. He's had three straight top 10 average running positions, which is awesome. And that's why I'm on him. 
The counter to Mikey McDowell would be that Watkins Glen is more of an equipment heavy track. It's why McDowell has not done well here historically, despite being a very good road course racer. But you have to remember that this is a different era than what we've had previously. The gap between the front guys and the guys like McDowell in terms of equipment is less now than it was in the past. I think McDowell can hang here, and I think he can win this race, and he has incentive to, given his spot in the points position. So whether you get Dowell 30 to 1, 35, 40, I'm showing value again. Please, please, please get the best number you can. But if you only bet FanDuel for whatever reason, 30 to 1 is still long enough for me to buy in and be okay with McDowell. He will be the first guy I turn to. Based on the current odds, if you can find Chris Busher, I've seen him 25 to 1 at <coughs> redacted, but uh, check that out. If you can get Busher at 25 to 1, I would take that as well. Uh, at FanDuel, I think he's 18 to 1. That's a bit shorter, but... If you can get Busher 25 to 1, that'd be my favorite. If not, I would go McDowell at 30 to 1, 35, 40, whatever it may be. One guy I'm very close to showing value on is Christopher Bell. He is the one Toyota who has shown any speed on a road course this year. That was mostly an Indy. He had a seventh place average running position in that race. And it's possible that Bell and his team figure something out there. And if he's figured something out, you'd think that would translate to the other Toyotas as well. I've got Bell at 5.4% to win this race. His implied odds at 18 to 1 are 5.3%. If you can get him longer than 18 to 1, I would probably bite now and not take the risk that he qualifies well on Saturday and all the value dries up. So if you get Bell 20 to 1, somewhere in there, I would buy in. I think that's a really good spot. If not, I would check back after practice and qualify and see if he, you know, see what he does there, see what the number is. I am super receptive to Bell this week based on the speed he showed in Indy. Really good deviation for Toyota. I'm hoping that they put that same setup, configuration, whatever it may be on Bush, Hamlin, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but Bell right now, 5.4% for me to win. So 20 to 1 or longer, I'll buy in. Bush or I'll buy in at 25. Daniel Suarez, I'd buy in 16 or so. I'd buy in on him. He's 12 to 1 at FanDuel, a bit too short for me, but. Those are the primary guys I'd be looking to. So again, the bite point is Suarez 16, Busher 25. I took him at 22 actually, but he's 18 at FanDuel. Uh, McDowell 30 or uh, longer, and then Bell 20 to 1 or longer, the spots I buy in for those guys. The non-outright market is pretty tough. Not much I like right now. It's a, it's a higher hold market, so that's not a huge surprise, not massively different than what we usually see. But the one guy I don't mind is Joey Hand at 18 to 1 to finish top 10. I have him above that, uh, though he was 20 to 1 earlier on today. Hand has good speed in road courses. So I think that that's why I'm receptive to this. He had really good speed at Sonoma, solid at Coda as well, and Road America. That's why I'm I I interested. The reason I'm not banging the table for Hand, despite the fact my model shows he's above 10%, I'll say that. Um, I'm embarrassed by that, but I'll say it. Uh, he's above 10% for me. The reason I'm not like rushing, despite showing about six, five or six percentage points of value, is that the Rick Ware racing cars are at more risk of not keeping up at this track. I mentioned McDowell, you know, equipment delta is lower. The equipment delta is still pretty high for Rick Ware racing. So I did do it at 20 to one. I would do it at 18 to one, but those factors keep me from getting overly jazzed about it. So hand where he currently sits okay with me, but I'm not rushing to get him at 18 to one to finish top 10 on the Xfinity side. It's a loaded field this week. Uh, we have the usuals, uh, AJ Allmendinger, Ty Gibbs, but also Kyle Larson, William Byron, Ross Chastain, Cole Custer. It's going to be a lot of fun from a racing perspective. FanDuel does not have odds up yet, but I can base, you know, some analysis on odds at other sites. It might be tough to squeeze value out of this race. The top five guys uh, for me are Larson, Allmendinger, Gibbs, Byron and Chastain, those guys account for 64% of the win odds in my simulations. Their implied odds at the other sports books are 94.3%. Oh boy. That means I'm betting on someone to beat all those guys, and that's pretty rough. I'm the closest to showing value on Ross Chastain. He is 9.7% for me versus 10% implied. So if you can get Chastain 11 to 1 or longer, I would buy in. Otherwise, I would uh, hope for something else to pop up. Chastain in that that car, not super competitive at Indy. I think that's kind of the biggest red flag for me, but 
really good talent um, that may be able to overcome the equipment, but that's why I'm not higher is the equipment. Uh, 9.7% for me on Ross Chastain. If you can't get Chastain at 11 to 1 or longer, I probably would hope that a book hangs a long number on Austin Hill. He's 6.5% to win for me. That's a pretty high number. And, you know, it might be too high because there are a lot of guys he has to beat, but I'm receptive to him. I did bet him at Indy, did not work out, but he's typically super fast on these road courses. I think for Hill, so I'm at 6.5%, which means I would show value around 15 to 1 or so. To account for the fact that he has a lot of guys he has to beat, I might hold out until he gets to 20. If you can give me Hill at 20 to 1, I would probably bite at that point because I believe so much in his talent on road courses. 20 to 1 on Hill, I'd buy in. 11 to 1 on Chastain, I'd buy in. But honestly, there's a good chance I wind up just sitting this one out because it's a super top heavy field. I can't show value in any of those top guys. So might wind up sitting it out. We'll see. We'll buy back in on, on Xfinity at Daytona, but otherwise uh, we'll hope uh, for some longer odds than either Chastain or Hill for this week. That's all we got here for today on Covering the Spread. Again, Tom Beckia will be with you tomorrow to talk some MLB and some NFL. Find Tom on Twitter at DFS underscore Tom. And also just make sure you're subscribed to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcast. I'll be out for this weekend, so not available for a lot of questions. But if you got them and I happen to be around, you can hit me up on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. You can also follow the FanDuel Podcast Network at FanDuel Podcast. Big thank you to everyone for tuning in for today. Good luck to you with both your MLB and your NASCAR bets. And we'll talk to you. I'll talk to you once again next week. Tom will talk to you tomorrow. This has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network. 